Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number. 86. Page number 86 and today is our day number 12. Let's get going. The very first problem that we see there on page 86, number 75, goes something like this. We are told that the total bicycles sold in 1990 was X and in 1993 was also X. Same quantity of bicycles were sold in the two periods, two years. We are further told that our market share, the market share of our company was 42% in 1990 and 33% in 93. Here's the question. Question is, how many fewer bicycle did we sell? How many fewer bicycles did we sell in 93 compared to 1990? Go ahead, do it yourself, pause the video. Well, since the number of bicycles, total bicycles that were sold is the same, it does not change. This X bicycles were sold in both periods. In this period, we sold 42% of the bicycles. In this period, we sold 33%. So how many fewer bicycles did we sell? The answer is 9% of X. Because it went from 43 to 32. Or rather, 42 to 33. That was it. That was the end. Let's do the next one. Whatever the X was, we sold 9% fewer. In 76 we are told, in 76 we are told that K is a positive integer. K is a whole number and it is a positive number. We are, question, we are being asked, what's the remainder? What is the remainder? when this quantity k plus 2 times k cube minus k is divided by 6. One more time, what's the remainder when k plus 2 times k cube minus k, that's a cube, is divided by 6. Go ahead do it yourself, pause the video. What do we do here? Well, as always, we have two choices here. One is to simply solve this problem in a classical way, orthodox way, traditional way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the algebraic way. And the other one is, other option is to do it in a quick and dirty way. Let's do quick and dirty first. We'll see what happens next. Uh, we'll do the algebraic list uh, later. In a quick and dirty way, if you want to find out what happens when you divide this quantity by six, the question is, What's the remainder when you divide this quantity by 6? Well, just make up a number for k. It has to be positive, it has to be positive, it has to be an integer. So let's start with k equal to 1 and just see what happens. If k is equal to 1, that is 3, and that is k cube is 1 minus 1, that's 0. This whole thing is 0, is 0. And what do you suppose is the remainder when you divide 0 by 6? If you divide 0 by 6, the remainder is 0. That's so. Let's do one more time. This time put in k equal to 2 if you like. If you put k equal to 2, that's 2 plus 2 is 4. And here we get 2 cube, 2 cube which is 8. 8 minus 2 is 6. 8 minus 2 is 6.
And what do you suppose is going to happen when you divide this quantity by 6? Again, when you divide by 6, the remainder is 0. The answer is, the remainder is 0. And if you want to sit there and try 15 more times, you can try by 15 different numbers, the remainder will always be 0. The question is, why? In order to understand why, that part requires algebra. Let's do it algebraically, shall we? As far as the exam is concerned, if you were taking the real GMAT right now, if I were taking the real exam right now, I wouldn't waste my time with any, any of the other stuff. Just plug in number two a couple of times and if it gives you the same answer, move on. That's it. But this is just to satisfy your curiosity. So this is k plus 2. This is k cube and k. Let's take out k common. If we take out k common, we end up with k squared minus 1. And k squared minus 1 can further be written as k plus 1 times k minus 1. Because it's a squared minus b squared. It's a difference of 2 squared. And here we have a k, and here we have a k plus 2. So let's see what happens. Let's put the smallest, smallest quantity first. k minus 1. Then we have a k. Then we have a k plus 1. And then we have a k plus 2, right here. What do you think we are dealing with? k minus 1, k, k plus 1, k plus 2. What do you suppose we are dealing with? We are dealing with four consecutive numbers. We are dealing with four consecutive numbers. If you are dealing with four consecutive numbers, at least one of them, if you take any four consecutive numbers, any four consecutive numbers, if you take them, any four consecutive numbers, at least, at least one, will be even and also at least at least one will be a multiple of three for example if we start with uh, seven eight nine and ten there you go there's a multiple of three right there and there is even number right there and there there will be there will at least be one even number because there will be two actually because there are four numbers there uh, so there will be at least one even number, that's a multiple of 2. There will be at least one number that's a multiple of 3 because you have four numbers and every third one is going to be a multiple of 3. So if you got one number that's a multiple of 3 and one number that's a multiple of 2, then obviously this product has to be divisible by 6 because you got a number that's a multiple of 2 and you got a number that's a multiple of 3. When you divide it, remainder will be zero. Remainder will be zero. Since one number, since, since at least one number is even, and since, since, one, since, one, since at least one number is a multiple of three, remainder, when this quantity is divided, will be a big fat zero. Let's do the next one. In the next one, we are asked to identify which fraction which fraction is closest to half. Which fraction is closest to half? Here are the answer choices: four seventh, five ninth. 6 11th, 7 13th, and finally 9 16th. Go ahead. I insist this time you pause the video and you do it yourself. One more time, our job is to simply identify which one of these fractions is closest to half. 4 7th, 5 9th, 6 11th, 7 13th, or 9 16th. Go ahead and do it yourself. Well, you could sit there and do all of these out manually and see which one comes, comes closest to zero or comes, comes closest to half. That's one way of doing it. Here's another way. Instead of comparing 
these fractions as they are given, instead of comparing these fractions as they are given, multiply everything by 10. Multiply everything by 10. Put a 0 here, 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 and take your half, take your half, and multiply it by 10. And now the question reads, now the question reads, not the fraction, well it's still fractions, these are all fractions, which fraction is closest to 5? We are looking for something that comes closest to 5, and now you'll see it, it goes much faster. 40 divided by 7, 7 fives are 35, so we're going to get a 35, that's a 5 times it goes, 7 fives are 35, and then we have a remainder of 5, 5 7. 9 fours are 45, so it goes 5 times, that's 45, we have a remainder of 5, 5 9. Five seven, five nine. As you can see, there's there's something going on there. Let's do the next one. Then we have sixty over eleven. Let's divide top and bottom by five. If you do that, eleven five is a fifty five. So we're gonna have is, we're gonna have five and five eleven. Similarly, thirteen times five is sixty five. Sixty five is five and five thirteen. Who do you suppose is winning so far? Let's put, let's put the last one separately. Who do you suppose is winning so far? As you can see, we're getting closer and closer to 5. 5 7, 5 9, because we're dividing by a bigger number, this, this guy is smaller. This fraction 5 9 is smaller than 5 7. I shouldn't have to explain all this thing to you. This thing is smaller than that one. It's getting closer to 5. And then we go from 5 9 to 5 11. Then we go from 5 11 to 5 13. This guy is, this guy is winning so far. This guy is winning so far. Let's look at the last one. That's the smallest one that you're going to get, closest to 5. Let's do the very last one. The last one was 9 over 16. And same thing. We're going to multiply it by 0, multiply it by 10, put a 0 there. So it's a 90. 16 times 5 is 80. So we're going to get a 5. We have a remainder of, remainder of 10. Because that's a 90. We're going to take away 80. 16 times 5 is 80. 16 fives are 80 because of course 16 times 10 is 160. So we have a remainder of 10 and this is where things get a little tricky. Now we're dividing by 16 and what happens is that when we simplify it, this boils down to 5 and 5 8. 5 and 5 8. And 5 8 is much bigger than 5 13. This guy is not the biggest one. This is the this is this guy is the winner. The answer is D. That's the smallest one that comes closest to half, or as we did it, that's the one that comes closest to 5. Number 78. Number 78 is a very, very straightforward question. It's a very simple question. We are told, we are being asked, p minus 1 over p squared over p is equal to r over p we are told. And we are told that p does not equal 0, of course, because we are dividing by p. The question simply is, how much is r? They just want, to, they just want us to solve this equation for r. Very simple, very straightforward, very childish problem. Let's do it together. Nothing to it at all, no complication. Take the common denominator. When you take a common denominator, you end up with p squared minus 1 minus p squared over p and that gives us r over p and now we can get rid of the r multiply both sides by p and we're done there you go there's our r so p squared minus 1 and then minus and a minus is going to give us a plus p squared and that's our r looks like it is 2p squared minus 1 that's what r equals to that was it. There were four problems in the first column of this page. We just did them, 75, 76, 77, 78. And then there are four problems in the next column, and I don't want to do all eight of them in one shot. I want to call it a day today. We'll meet again tomorrow, and we'll do the second column on page number 86. All right? Bye now.